All right. So uh, I'm Dave Thaler. I work at Microsoft in the group that does both Windows and Linux. And so everything that I've done has been open source, cross-platform, uh, standards, and so on. Uh, but I am uh, uh, excited to my, my first time here at the Linux-specific conference, and I'm presenting from Windows Desktop. So there you go. Because it's all about cross-platform, right? We want EBPF to go cross-platform. So. All right, so just some easy background ones to kind of get us back from lunch here. Um, EBPF already has a bunch of runtime platforms, OK? You can see across the years, EBPF for Windows is the one that uh, we've been working on. But it's been more than just Linux since maybe 2015, if you look at all the runtimes that have been out there. And so the goal that we want to talk about in this presentation is to get at least libbpf and bpf tool to be cross-platform. Okay. Now, to Brendan's point, yep, eventually we want a bunch of other tools that sit on top of things like libbpf to also be cross-platform, but you've got to start somewhere right, and move up. Um, this would allow more people to be using the same implementation rather than re-implementing them that we've seen over time and uh, allow it to be a lot more easy to write applications that are indeed cross-platform. So how do we do that? Well, the usual approach that's been talked about is you need to split the platform agnostic functionality away from the platform specific stuff. Okay? Non-trivial exercise, and so that's what I'm going to go through. This is the uh, table of contents, the things that I'm going to walk through. And rough for order of probably uh, least controversial to more controversial, so probably more discussion towards the end, but feel free to ask questions anytime. But that's, those are the five questions I'm going to go through. So if I look at what's in LibBPF and BPF tool right now, okay, there's things that fit into all these different categories here. So the first one is fairly straightforward, which is things that are compiler specific, independent of what platform you are, things that are very specific to GCC. Okay. So these are things like Pragma GCC, underscore attribute. You have some uh, GCC language extensions that are not part of the C standard. Things like equals uh, curly braces with nothing in the middle. You have things like assumptions that you can take void star and do uh, uh, addition on a void star. Um, that's not in the C standard. And then things like the parentheses around curly braces. Okay? All those are GCC specific extensions. Okay? Then there are things that are assumptions about sizes, like is size t the same thing or different than an unsigned long? Okay? Answer varies by you know, platform or compiler or whatever. Okay? So all those things are kind of littered throughout the code right now because it was intended to only be compiled with one compiler. Right? So not surprising. Okay? And so here's the proposal. Sorry for the small print if you're in the back of the room. Um, Adhere to the C standard whenever possible in at least cross-platform code, or at least features that are supported by all the relevant compilers. If there's something that's not standard, but it tends to be supported by all the compilers out there, then we don't care. Um, avoid unnecessary assumptions about type sizes. That's the, the bottom one there, the, the size T and unsigned long. Um, cross-plat files, here's a, a principle. The cross-platform files should not hard code anything that's compiler-specific pragmas or attributes. Right? So you would never hard code things like pragma GCC or attribute, whatever. Okay? Anything that's compiler-specific would move to a separate header file that would be the same name for different compilers. Right? So you'd have a, a compiler.h for uh, GCC. There kind of already is one. It's Linux compiler.h. But if you're using GCC on a different runtime, then maybe it shouldn't be called Linux compiler. Maybe it should be GCC compiler.h, right? Because GCC isn't just for Linux. There's other runtimes out there uh, on that older slide there. And so that might be renamed. And you'd add things like MSVC compiler and so on. It would have the compiler-specific definitions for those. And then, of course, in the C files, you just say include compiler.h and let the include paths work out which one it is. And at least I have a bias to saying, let's try to avoid if defs as much as possible. You can do a lot of stuff with if defs. I hate if defs. Okay. So in my proposals here, I want to try to propose things that would work with minimizing use of if defs any place. Okay. But maybe they're not unavoidable. I'm just going to try to minimize them. All right. So just for example, right, that's the sort of stuff that you see in there. And then you do libbpf deprecated, libbpf alias, dot, dot, dot. Okay. I said to put the easy stuff first, right? Okay. So that takes care of just making stuff compile with other compilers. Okay. Second thing is platform-specific code. And by platform-specific code, I mean things having nothing to do with eBPF. Okay. Just things about the regular platform that are not eBPF-specific. That's issue three, is if they're eBPF-specific. Okay. So things like Linux limits. You have other things that aren't eBPF. They're things that you also tend to use in, in addition. Things like rlimit, netlink, and so on. And there's implementations of various functions in libbpf or commands in bpf tool that the implementation may vary, but of course, you'd still have one. Okay? And so I'll give you an example on the next slide. So here's the proposal there, similar to the compiler one, that says, OK, 
we could put platform specific includes, like include Linux slash limits.h, stick that inside of another header file and call that platform.h, or pick your, pick your favorite name, I just made something up. And so you'd say something like Linux platform.h, Windows platform.h, and you'd include in that, and then that would do all the other includes and things specific to the platform. And the same thing, you'd use the include path to say which platform is it, while I'm compiling for Windows or Cry. Okay. Jason. Uh, quick clarifying question. <clears throat> uh, with the GCC and the platform, are you planning to allow then for like GCC compilation for Windows as part of this? It should quote work, or is that out of scope of this proposal? Um, I don't want to preclude it, but I'm not going to do it. If you'd like to do it, more power to you. Contributions gratefully accepted, but the principle is I'm not trying to make this proposal here specific to Windows. Okay? You saw that table of runtimes. The point is here's what changes would be necessary, I think, regardless. You just open it up to say any of those other runtimes, whether you're doing it for, you know, if I went back there, you were doing it for FreeBSD or Mac OS X or whatever else, you'd want the same things. Okay? And so, if, say, if Mac OS X wants to use GCC, awesome. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so avoiding platform specific if defs and doing the same for functions whose implementation varies by platform and C file. So here's an example. Um, so Lawrence had asked this question uh, uh, in Slack on the uh, public channel for eBPF for Windows, which was Have you decided what your ABI API boundary is going to be? Is it Rossis calls the libbpf C API? Okay. And my answer was the answer is libbpf. Now, it turns out there's a lot of things that want to do things like, you know, BPF or syscalls or whatever, but we want to enable porting to Windows, and so this is temporary aside that's going to get to, my, to, 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 to motivate what I'm proposing here. So this is not core here. This is just what we did on Windows, is we shimmed the equivalent of Linux syscalls over the top of libbpf APIs instead of the other way around, okay? So the more type-safe one is actually the more performant one, okay? So why did we do that? Well, because syscall doesn't exist on Windows. Syscall is a Linux-specific API. And uh, the ioctals on Windows work differently. For example, uh, file descriptors do not exist in the kernel. They exist only in user land. Okay, on Windows, handles, which is pointer size, is what's used in the kernel for all objects. Okay? Has the same kind of meaning as file descriptors do, but you can't fit it into an unsigned int32. Okay? So what that means is that things like BPF Atter that has you know, unsigned int32s in a bunch of places, you can't actually fit it there. Right? You can't take a BBPF Atter that's composed by an application that's expected to pass it to the kernel. Right? You just you can't do it. And so uh, a lot of the libbpf APIs contain a user space step. Okay? And so at the point that we would call into the syscall, you call into a different API. And so think of it as a, taking whatever calls syscall and calling a Windows-specific thing at that step. And everything else in libbpf tends to wrap those other common functions. It's the lowest layer in libbpf, right? You have the low layer just wrappers around syscalls, and then everything else that kind of marshals things and, and does everything else. So the takeaway is that anything that directly calls syscall is, in fact, platform-specific. So what we want to do is take everything that actually calls the syscall call in libbpf and put that into a separate file and say, on another platform, it could be a syscall or it could be something else at that very lowest layer such that 90% of libbpf is, is, is unchanged and 10% of it is platform specific. I don't know if that's the right number, right? So okay. one, one question here. I presume yeah. we also have some libbpf APIs which take file descriptors, right? Oh, which absolutely. Do, yeah, so that's the whole point, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like on Windows, they all take file descriptors, right? It just so happens that at the very bottom layer, right, we would call the, we would call the syscall that's when they translate from file descriptors into handles. Because file descriptors are still common in user land on all platforms, basically, because it's just part of the BSD API, right? POSIX API uses file descriptors, right? So all these different platforms that support POSIX and BSD APIs, they all have file descriptors. Just on Windows, they don't exist in the kernel, okay? And so you do that mapping right at the point in time of you're making the octal call. And so the equivalent of syscall up on user land is takes the file descriptor, converts it to the handle, puts that in the octal, and sends that down to the kernel. All right. So this is the type of thing that um, whether it is a platform.c or a, you know, f something more specific, because you probably have ones for multiple of those .c files for different types of functionality. Um, again, the goal is to reuse as much of libbpf as possible and only wrap the syscall itself. All right. So that's the platform-specific code part. Any other questions on that? Because now we get into the harder, more complicated stuff. You thought that was complicated? 
Yeah, OK. All right, so now we get into eBPF feature-specific code. Okay. One quick. Can I get back to like the file descriptors? You were saying that there is file descriptor, it's just like translated while doing like IOCTL. Who's doing that? The libbpf. Well, yes. No, no, no. Like in, in, in the world, it was out libbpf, like and it was out bpf. Like yeah, yeah. You're saying like standard library has like this concept Correct. of file descriptor. Like the like C who, standard library, for example, right. has. So like it, yeah, if, yeah. if I compile my application on Windows using the standard library, right? Yep. I still have like the FD. So who does Correct. the translation? The C standard library. So it just the standard it. CLib. Okay. Yeah. And so the, 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 thing that, the thing that exposes all the APIs that take file descriptors, so like the call to open or fopen, things like yeah, fopen takes a file descriptor, that does the mapping inside fopen, for example. Okay. Or fclose, you know, all those have a mapping, yeah. Uh, think of a handle as being a pointer and a file descriptor as being an index, right? And in fact, that's actually an implementation is just use the index and return the pointer to it, so it's like a, 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 a one-step operation. Okay, if you do it in the right place, so. Uh, okay, any other questions? Okay. All right. Now we get on to eBPF specific things, okay? There's a bunch of eBPF specific functionality that uh, varies by platform. Um, there's many eBPF features. You think about like BTF, you think about the BPF file system and so on. All of those are things that um, vary by platform or at least vary over time. So for example, not all possible features come in at the same time for every platform. Okay. Think about what would be the on-ramp if say, you know, Mac OS, because we went through this with Windows, right? But you know, when the next one comes along, do they, is it a take all or nothing, in which case you get nothing until you're at the end and you got always playing catch up or whatever, or you can pick, pick up stuff piecemeal. Well, Linux picked up piece, stuff piecemeal, right? We got Linux versions that didn't have BTF, right? That stuff came in later, okay. And so, uh, today, libbpf and bpf tool both have things that um, make calls into you know, BTF and assume, assume that there exists a BPF file system and so on. And so we said, well, what do we do with these? So here's my proposal that um, you can say the same thing is true for libbpf. All right. So there's two things we can do. So the first question is, before I can give a proposal, I first have to say, okay, let's say libbpf API, such as the one there, bpf object btf, Okay, what do you do on a platform that doesn't have BTF? Okay, should you have that API be absent from libbpf on that one? In which case, you know, you get a compiler error if you try to compile a program that uses it. Or would it be present and always return failure? In which case, you don't get a compiler error, you get a runtime error. Okay, my personal bias is uh, compile time errors are always better than runtime errors. Okay. Because it's predictable. Otherwise, you get an indeterminate state that your application hasn't been tested with. But that also either makes assumption that you're compiling library on like specific version of the platform, or you cannot have some features added later, right? So yep. Uh, I did say these are getting progressively more difficult, right? Yeah. So that, that that's why these are legitimate. Well, my point is, right? A is not an option. I think. You think A is not an option? Like BTF example in libpf, yeah, yeah. right? Like we return null or error or whatever if the kernel doesn't support it. But like API still expresses this concept, right? Yeah, but if you think about another runtime, if you were compiling a program and linking with uh, libbpf, okay, then is it acceptable to say when compiling for Windows, you're linking with libbpf.lib, right? It's not you know .a or something. It's .lib, right? You're you're linking with the specific the Windows one, right? And would things be absent in that static lib that you're linking with or that that um, uh, stub lib that you're linking with? So there's no single right answer here, right? So I, I argue that for such cases that A, for some platforms in some cases, you, you can make the argument that says A for some cases and B for other cases, and let it vary. Yeah, over here. So is there some minimal subset that everything has to support as a core library for BPF, or is it platform specific for everything? That is probably a matter of opinion. My personal opinion is, Yes, there is. Uh, for example, I would say that you're probably not a real runtime if you don't say support the map uh, you know, APIs, you know, map update, map lookup, map create, that kind of thing. That's an example of something. Um, things like uh, load, right? You're not really a BPF platform if you can't load programs, right? So there probably is a minimal set. I've not tried to enumerate them, but uh, when uh, developing a platform that wasn't uh, Linux, we went through that and said, well, here's a set of features that are incremental and we can't really be called a runtime until you've done you know, load and unload programs, have hooks and helpers, have maps, and that's kind of the core set. And then you can keep adding stuff from there. Okay. But 
But still, even among the things that I just rattled off, there's been different APIs over time, right? There's deprecated ones, there's newer ones, and so are they all part of the minimal subset or maybe not the deprecated ones? So it's a fairly complicated question, all right? Even if you look at APIs in libpf to load a program, how many of them are there? How many of them were there in older versions of the kernel? How many of them are deprecated now? And you have some of all those, right? Okay. Now here I've been using libpf, but it turns out the exact same questions we can ask about bpf tool commands, okay? BPF tool, you know, BTF, right? If you got a command that's there and you say, you know, help, should you show that command if it can't do anything on that platform or should you not show it? If you try to type it in, should it give an error or what? And so this is a A or B, right? So again, my personal preference is always for the uh, don't show it if you know what's always going to fail here case. But I'm not adamant about that. I'm just saying you, once you make this choice, it affects a number of other things down on, on later discussions. So. But all this is not new to Windows, right? Like it is we not. have the same thing on, on Linux, and yes. we sort of have some solution, whether it's best or not. But like, why would we change this for Windows, for example? Well, on the Linux part of it is uh, you compile it along with the kernel, and so it always matches, and you don't care about backwards compatibility, no. right? No, not no, at all. Yeah. Like I mean, we, we both compile libpf separately, and now we compile bpf tool separately. That's good. Yeah. I mean, and, and also like. Uh, for, like, for example, in our case, we use the BPF tool from BPF Next, but it also has to run on old 4.9 stuff, right? So, yeah. And I think it's probably the same issue here. Like, it is, yeah. Like yeah. once the, your BPF runtime on Windows gets this capability, it will be supported. But Correct. like for yeah. older version, it will, it will be there, but it will yeah. just bar bail out with an error, maybe. So, or I think it's probably still better than being absent. Okay. But so back to uh, Andre, do you think that uh, based on that history, you think that B is the better answer? Or that you think it's still debatable? I think it has to be B. You think it has to be B? Yeah. Uh, OK. What's that? Presumably, my BPF tool scripts would work. Like they won't work in either A or B, right? Well, OK. <laughs> because so, the, so the functionality in, is missing no, that's in your script, right? No, because my script has error checking, right? My, my script knows what Linux will do. Uh -huh. And it'll say, oh, I'm going to get this error if BTF doesn't exist, and then I'll do something else. Right, but I, I would have to add something else, presumably, to handle this error where like it just doesn't exist, right? Like it might be a different kind of failure. Okay, so let seems me add more a test case to me if they're using cool. the same, okay, same errors. So let me test this hypothesis uh, because it could be that there'd be uh, because again, this comes back to my question: Is A for some cases, or B for and B for other cases, or is it always A or is it always B? Okay, it's always B. I think. So okay, right. so well, just to I'm test saying that, like right now I'm in practice. To test right? that, yeah. let's say that we have a, a and I'm making this up because there's no such thing right now. This is hypothetical. Let's say we came up with there was some eBPF feature that did not make sense on on Linux. I, like I said, existence proof I can't give you right now. But say hypothetically, if there was. Would we say that that command goes in there even though it will never work on Linux? If you make BPF tool cross-platform, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. I'm just testing to see if they give you the same answer. As long as you give me the same answer, then we can go with B. Okay. The alternative is using git test, right, which I think he didn't want. Uh, no, no, because I, I have a, a possible answer to that. But again, whether they're a good idea or a bad idea, I don't know. But just in case you went with A, then I had to have something on my slides. So we can skip over that now if you, if, when I get there, okay? so. But it could also be the other way around, right? If you have features that are only specific on Windows, yeah. you would. I mean, yeah. so basically, so like, if it's specific to operating system, to like platform, yeah. right? Like, you can you 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 can decide like what's available for that platform hypothetically at compilation time, right? Like you yeah. cannot yeah. have like Correct. single BPF tool compiled both for uh, yeah. Linux and for Windows, yeah. like as a single executable. That's why you can make this decision. Yeah. That's not true for different versions of the platform. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, like, you know, the BPF file system is a fairly Linux-specific related or maybe Unix-specific concept where everything is a pseudo-file system, right? Where other platforms, that's not the case, right? So if I made up something, let's say, let's pretend that there was something that somebody came up with of using the registry in Windows, which doesn't have an analogy exactly on Linux. And you had a BPF thing in the registry, right? And commands and stuff to do that. We'd say, yeah, we put that into there. I can't think of a case where we'd want to do that yet, but who knows? Maybe somebody will come up with that three years from now, so. All right. Was there another... Question or shall I go on? Just thinking out loud, I mean, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, if we, if we have platform specificness that we're, it, when it comes up, we should probably standardize on a format for laying this out. Mm -hmm. Much like Go has been very um, like strong on their opinion on how you deal with cross-platform. Yep, yep. 
And so uh, somebody that's dealt with that, I would love to collaborate uh, if we can come up with that, if people are familiar with other standards across there. I've done a bunch of open source stuff in uh, C, but if you know of precedents in other languages that would be more familiar to people, that would more easily map into, say, you know, the Go wrapper around libvpf and that kind of thing. So. Sorry. Right. And, and ju just to finish a uh, thought on top of yours, I mean, yep. maybe like libvpf could have um, like a platform specific include if if it if this helper code or so is really useful in the libpf context for let's say windows or only linux maybe that could be like a linux specific or windows specific include like we yep. similar what we have with the assembler stuff where it's like where you right. pull in that specific platform yep hold that thought yes uh, all right, so this was, a lot of this is if you went with A, and so this is the one that I said you can probably skip a bunch of this, uh, but we could say should feature specific functions. Okay, I mean, it's part of the bottom here. Feature specific functions, so like the wrapper around his calls and things. Should they be in a separate file from other functions or surrounded in a feature specific if def, right? So now we get to what you're talking about there. Um, I could live with things like have BPF, BTF support. I, I, I don't adore it. So I, I would rather have a solution that doesn't do that, but I could live with that. Okay. But then you say, OK, what about code that enumerates stuff? This is the one that only is relevant if you were to ha only selectively display things in help, right? And so this question here would only come up if you said A or A sometimes. Okay. So, uh, but on the bottom here, putting feature specific code in a separate file per feature or maybe per platform if it varies by platform. That's the bottom one. So I think we can skip the straw man here because it's for A. All good? Skipping it? All right, now we get to things that are the things that are specific to a program type, slash hook. The set of program types and attached types can vary by platform and version. And there's a bunch of APIs that are very specific to a particular program type, like TC APIs and, and uh, text that's inside the BPF tool net help that references them and so on. Okay. And so you can have some program types. You can imagine program types that show up only on other platforms that are not Linux. You can imagine some program types that might be Linux only. Don't know if there are any, but maybe there are. There probably are. Um, and then there's ones that show up on some, set of some subset of platforms and so on. So this help text here, if you want it to be the best help text, would actually vary by platform. Okay? Because this help text assumes that the only ones that are supported are XDP and TC. Okay? And so if you support a third one, with you know, some other platform, then this help text is wrong, right? Because it's just hard-coded help text right now. So the question is, what do you do? Because the list of what's supported, or at least the maximal set, maybe, I don't know, um, it varies by platform. And so this was um, uh, also a note about in Windows, the list is not fixed at compile time, because you can dynamically add and remove them after boot, even. Um, so some additions don't require libbpf or tool BPF tool code changes, like if you were just adding an additional attached type for an existing program type, okay, then most of the commands that dealt with that program type would still just, just work. So proposal. Sorry, one, yeah. one, one question. Go this uh, list is not fixed at compile time. Yep. How does it work? Like some, some add-on can like add like extra type of the program dynamically? Yep. So there's the core execution context, and there's other drivers on Windows, which would be kind of analogous to a LKM, right? You can be dynamically loaded or unloaded at runtime. Okay, as long as they're signed, right, then they can be loaded or unloaded dynamically. And they can register stuff with the core. The core has no knowledge of any um, program type, has no knowledge of the other ones. They're dynamically registered, and so it's all runtime introspection. So it's basically at the time that the driver starts up, it registers stuff, and then it has the complete list. So the EBPF runtime itself is just this master index of things with uh, function entry points into other drivers. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of ones that happen to be in the same driver by coincidence, just so you don't have to install multiple drivers, right? Some of the core ones. Okay. Um, but it means that at the time that you're compiling BPF tool or even libbpf, you can't enumerate them because they would still work at runtime and they would be installed after libbpf tool was even compiled, or libbpf or bpf tool were compiled. Okay. So what this says is that in order to deal with that case where it's dynamic, then the list, it's better to not hard code it in the C file, but to put that into a function. Okay. That function could have the hard coded one. So like in libbpf tool in one case and uh, libbpf in one case and bpf tool in another case, there are hard coded lists in there. Okay. It says, well, if you take those hard coded lists and you put them in a platform specific function that's specific to Linux, and it returns the table in Linux, and on Windows it makes a call, and then returns the list, then it would work on either of them. Okay. 
so that's the proposal here, is to take anything that's a hard-coded list that's in this category here and move it down in the platform-specific file and not in the platform agnostic code. Integer values are another interesting uh, discussion that I think has happened either on Slack or the mailing list, I forget which, but it was uh, a while back. Um, so I talked about this first part here, so we just talked about that. Uh, integer values, and by integer values, we're talking about a new program type, right? You need another integer value in the enum, right? And so uh, those are, of course, centrally coordinated, but the actual numbers, like the fact that, you know, what is five, okay? Well, five could actually vary by platform. Now, whether you want that to happen or not, you could have an argument there. But right now, it is the case that the actual numeric value of you know, XDP program type actually can vary by platform. They're not all the same number across all those different platforms back there. Um, they all, you can have common source code because you're now you're, you're writing your source code using the symbol, right? using BPF XDP or BPF prog type XDP. And that will work, right? because the pound defined or the enumeration is actually different on different platforms, whether it's the number five, the number seven, the number two, or whatever. Um, and so typically the integer values, you don't hard code them in source code. If you do, they're probably not a cross-platform code if you're hard coding the number two. Okay? As long as you're using the symbol form, then it's fine. It's source compatible. Uh, and the b current belief, at least my current belief, unless somebody educates me otherwise, is that there actually isn't a need to coordinate the actual integer values across all platforms. So let's say you're going to add some Windows-specific program type. And all you want to know is another number. Okay? Is there a need to coordinate that number that's only for Windows with the Linux community, or vice versa? Okay? My claim is, no. There's actually not a need to go to that extra level of coordination burden. Okay? As long as the mapping from symbol to number is in the platform-specific file, you only got to coordinate across that community. Right? The Linux community maintains the Linux header, and the Windows community maintains the Windows header. And you might have to agree on the same symbol name. Okay? You know, BPFXDP is BPFXDP, right? um, it, all caps. right? But whether it's the next number here or the next number there, they tend to just be sequential, right? And so if Windows implements an earlier one on Linux and a later milestone, it'll have a later number, for example. And the same would be true for, you know, what are the other ones? Generic eBPF and the other runtimes on the, on the first slide. So, All right. So interestingly, libbpf has a great API that converts a name to a program type, but BPF tool hard codes the reverse mapping. And so my argument here is that for parity, we probably want to move that from BPF tool over into libbpf and have a reverse mapping API. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. OK. Now we get into the difficult part, or perhaps more contentious part. Okay. Uh, and sorry for the small print here. Uh, so status quo, in case you're new here, um, uh, libbpf and BPF tool have their own repositories, but they're just mirrors of BPF next. Um, Nice quote for Alexi here. Uh, Non-Linux patches would be awesome to see. Thank you, Alexi. Um, but all patches have to go via BPF at Viger and land via BPF next trees. Um, from other runtimes' perspectives, that's actually a huge hurdle. Okay. Now, your opinions may vary as to whether that's a hurdle you want or a hurdle you don't want, okay? but it is a huge hurdle right now. right? If you think about everybody that's familiar with GitHub and just the way that GitHub works in open source projects, you go back to that first slide right back here. Uh, they're basically all GitHub projects, except for maybe the top one, right? They're all just regular projects in GitHub that are used to common flow. And so saying, okay, hey, all your other five runtimes or whatever, just need to submit stuff with this other one for the platform agnostic code, okay? Then uh, that's, ac oops, that's actually somewhat of a hurdle, okay? Now, uh, anything that's actually a hurdle is overcomable, right? You can jump hurdles, right? But it does provide an incentive for other runtimes, especially newer ones. I mean, newer than Linux or Windows, right, for that matter. Um, it provides them an incentive to either fork or re-implement. And uh, I believe that neither of those are good for eBPF as a whole, right? Again, common implementation is better, okay? Um, now, of course, there's often the question that some people ask is, do you really want lots of non-Linux files like, you know, msvc compiler.h or, you know, whatever in the Linux source tree? I would argue probably not, and you'd want to look at the platform agnostic part, okay? um, especially since trying to build the non-Linux files may require dependencies on other SDKs or repositories as prerequisites to build, and you probably don't want that in your um, CI-CD for, for the specific to, say, Linux, for example. So again, it's a straw man proposal anyway. Feel free to beat it up. Uh, put files for other runtimes, such as Windows, in separate repositories, 
could even be the repository for that runtime. Um, Linux platform files stay in Linux or Astria as is. That's pretty obvious. For now, keep the platform agnostic files in Linux source tree, meaning no change there, but uh, that still leaves an incentive there that I claim is going to cause problems over time, and it certainly causes extra hurdles for me personally to jump over, but that's surmountable. It's just a big effort, right? Um, and so we have the existing mirrors to add additional GitHub workflows. So this is for the next slide, which is like CICD and stuff. How would you actually do that? How would you actually verify that the platform agnostic code didn't cause a regression in Windows or Linux or you know, whatever else comes along? Okay. But uh, the biggest open question is, what do we do with platform agnostic files longer term? Right. Okay. This is my last slide here. So uh, if you've got comments on this, uh, I'm just giving you a heads up. I've got one more slide after this. Any comments? <laughs> I, I, I would, so, uh, okay. I, there's things that I would love, but then there's practical reality. What, what I would love is I would love for things like the libepf mirrors to become the authoritative version, because they're just regular GitHub stuff, okay? Just like, you know, open SSL on things and then have that be incorporated in Linux. That would be my ideal world, okay? I don't know if I can get there from here, but that would be my ideal world, right? That, that's, that would be the least yeah. hurdle, the least incentive to fork or re-implement as we start seeing more and more BPF runtimes. And I would love there to be more and more BPF runtimes. So in, in general, I think like having or keeping only the Linux platform specific files in the Linux source tree could work, but then you have the issue to keep up with what's being added there. Like if there's new features or new compiler specific things, then you need to always catch up and implement it in that mm -hmm. other repository, right? If we keep it out, then yeah. I guess like the question is, how do we solve the CI issue? That's the next slide. Yeah, yes. no, you see that? Yeah, I said that's, that's, that's the one. I said they're progressively more difficult, right? Because now you've got, that's the real problem. Is how do you solve CI CD, right? Okay. So, yeah, this might be all, you know, motherhood and apple pie, putting the source tree outside, the, the, the core agnostic files and something outside of Linux because they're not supposed to be Linux only, right? Then, then how do you solve CI CD? So, here's my initial thoughts. Um, and I'm, uh, Daniel shared the kind of, uh, 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 we also have ones that uh, CICD test. My other hope is if Windows relies on the same one, this would allow for portability and mock testing the available Linux hooks on Linux and vice versa. Yep, 100%. Okay, so now the real questions are, okay, so if you're gonna make a change in platform specific code, okay, so I'm gonna make a change in Linux specific code or a change in the Windows specific code, okay. The question is, when do you do CICD test? When do you do C build and test, okay. So the proposal here that I had is that uh, the platform-specific code stays in, the plat in some platform-specific repository. Maybe some platforms have multiple repositories. Um, with its own CI-CD build and testing. So if you make a change to the Windows one, the Windows CI-CD needs to run, but not the Linux one. Okay. So Linux does not build or test Windows. Windows does not build or test Linux. Pick another runtime, does not build or test either Linux or Windows. Okay. So the platform-specific code is the easy part, right? The hard part is the platform agnostic code. So let's say I make a change to the core libepf API, and it's supposed to be, because we went with B, right? It's going to be present on all platforms whether the API works or not. Okay, so everybody's got to put it in the same one. Okay, so when you do build and test, okay, how does the CI/CD work? Okay, so now again you have A or B, and notice I don't have a preference between A and B because I think it's it, it's a, it's not an easy answer. Maybe you got to C, solve my problem. Okay, so the first category A would be all right. So before our core change is merged that it requires every runtime that's in the supported set, okay, to actually sign off that says, yes, CICD passed. Okay, so if I make a change to core libepf, Windows has to say it works, and Linux has to say it works, and if there's a third one in the future, Mac OS, whatever else, they have to say it works, or the core change doesn't get merged, at least without explicit knowledge of what fails, right? Maybe we said, there was a bug in that other thing, we're gonna merge it anyway, you fix your bug, right? That's valid, okay. It's actually harder to coordinate if that is in the Linux repository to say, we can't merge the BPF next stuff unless, uh, unless Windows uh, has run a CI-CD test. That's much harder. And of course, uh, Alexi pointed out that libepf has a much higher rate of changes in the kernel. So this happens a lot, right? Another alternative might be B, which is uh, you test the Linux runtime because it's more special than the other ones because it's kind of the, the core part right now, okay? And other runtimes are tested after a merge. Okay, 
This has a higher risk of regression for the other runtimes and creates an incentive to fork or reimplement. It's certainly more practical doable in the short term, right? But it does have this longer term uh, debt that accrues and incentives that we don't like the incentives, okay? So maybe there's a C, I don't know, but I'm stuck between A and B right now. This is my last slide. So this is where I wanted some discussion. Anybody got any magic answers here for me? Are we all scratching our heads in, in depression at this point? So this kind of is I'm trying to understand or like trying to rethink about the decisions we made in the past. It's like I feel libbpf to me is a wrapper of Linux BPF APIs that we do. It's not a wrapper around like a BPF instruction site that uh, we try to put it into a operating system, right? But like this feels like we have some instruction side, uh, the library is around the instruction site. But it's kind of not that way to me, but I, I don't know whether Andre, Alexi, Daniel, you, when you it's think about libbpf, this sounds different. It's a mix of all of those. All in the same library right now, that's, that's part of the problem. I mean, it's true that libbpf has like very strong Linux roots, yeah. right, yeah. and assumptions, like even the FD itself, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, a satisfactory okay. answer to all this just is like clear, not to do platform yeah. agnostic yeah, stuff. Just to be clear, <laughs> FD is not Linux specific. FD is part of the POSIX standard. What is Linux specific is that the kernel has FDs. Okay. Now, technically, any version of POSIX would do that, but. So I, I think like if, if we really do this, the platform agnostic, like is it really gonna be 90% or is end up on the like maybe 50 or even lower? It, uh, you mean of, of, of pure APIs? Oh, I mean, if we took the BPF logic and see what yeah. we really cut out are like uh, platform agnostic ones, maybe that's not 90, 80 percent, but more yeah. like 50 percent. So not all APIs are equally used, right? There's the, the, the ones that everybody uses, and there's this long tail of, you know, decreasingly less used ones, right? And so things like, you know, prog load and, you know, map update and map lookup are in the, the core set. And so if you were saying, what's the percentage of APIs that are platform agnostic? It's a much smaller number than if you said, what percentage of use cases are, are covered by the platform agnostic case, case, right? What percentage of applications would use, you know, whatever the percentage of APIs that's cross-platform? you get to a much higher percentage of applications. And it's similar to the you know, BPF tools numbers that we saw earlier today, so. I guess from you, so. <laughs> so Alexi, were you gonna say something? Um, well, it's probably controversial. Uh, this whole slide is controversial, I admit that, so. Towards the, well, my comment would be that this whole like Windows, somehow you paint in it that it's uh, Like you start in, you start in from the uh, premise that it's good to share the code, right? So we kind of try to do this, but to me, like Golang, like Rust, they're even uh, bigger delta than like different platforms. Like at least on Windows and Linux, we're both like using C as common denominator, but Golang is completely different language and they have their own like libraries now, at least like couple libraries uh, written in Go. Then there are like at least three different libraries, libpf like that are written in Rust. So I would say the idea that preventing the fork uh, and trying like really, really hard to prevent the fork, it kind of goes against the grain what we already have like the Rust and Golang and all of those libraries, they kind of fork the idea and they have been developed in parallel. And what we've tried, but if you look back and what libpf actually does, like 95% of it is parsing ELF files. And Golang libraries were also parsing ELF files and so on. So what we've tried to do with this uh, skeleton and light skeleton approach is to construct something that the job of libpf of actually like loading, the whole like elf business will go away. So I think something similar can be done like for Windows and Golang and Rust. Like I'm just trying to put like together the problem of having Windows and Linux and C and uh, Go yep. into kind of the same bucket and then yep. say, well, everything that libpf, the existing libpf does will be 
like moved like moved away. Like it's not what we saw. But then on Windows, you pretty much do the tiny wrappers on whatever Windows stuff, whereas loading and parsing all the is not part of what you do. So that's kind of trying to say, well, let's not do any of this stuff with libpf itself. It's uh, let's focus libpf on Windows to be it can be it can live in its own like GitHub repo and will be only Windows stuff in there because it won't be doing any elf parsing. The only thing it will be like tiny wrappers wrappers on top of like map accessors. So I just make sure I understand what you're saying. That you said there's a, that you believe the future direction is that all the elf parsing code should move out of libpf into something else. No, it stays, stays part of the LPF, okay. but you don't need to even compile it on Windows. Mm -hmm. Like, Windows doesn't need to... Uh, Windows uses the same L file pressure, right? It, it still uses .o files that come out of Clang and everything else, and it uses the same .o files. They're compiled with different headers, right? But you still have a, an L file at the end of the day. That BP, a BPF program is just an L file. And so the, the same BP, the same ELF loading logic and stuff can be used on Windows. Sure, well, yes, so in that sense, you want to run like VPF tool itself as a Windows binary. Well, currently, the, all the skeleton and light skeleton generation done by VPF tool. It's a combination of both, like libvpf and VPF tool that are doing this job of generating something that potentially usable by Go, and Rust, or whatever. But it's not universal answer, of course, even now. Like, even in Go, people parse BTF and parse ELF. ELF parser has its own issues in Golang. Uh, Rust, again, another different story. Uh, C++ skeleton, C++ libraries and wrappers. I'm not saying that this is the answer that yeah, I'm like yeah. advocating, not even strongly. It's just like I'm trying to look at the problem, whereas like Linux versus Windows, it's kind of the same as C versus Go. I agree with that, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I'd I think love to be able to solve them both the same way, yeah, whatever that way is, yeah. Um, now, uh, I agree with the way that uh, Daniel put it, that uh, if it relies on the same libbpf, then it allows for greater portability, because you have less chance of divergent and having you know, prototypes that are different and so on. So I, I, the other possibility that one could go is to say, if the only thing that was in common across platforms was the .h file, okay? Now that just says, now you have to re-implement everything, and if you steal code or whatever, I just don't like that as much, right? Because now you have copying of elf parsers and different elf parsers, even if they're doing the same thing. So I don't like that as much, um, but it's also possible. I mean, as a temporary state, it's not good, right? But as a temporary state, we're currently, uh, the Windows one is currently operating out of a fork of the main, and so whenever main updates, it pulls in the fork, and it has if defs and stuff there, and it's ugly, and I'm trying to get rid of it. And so this is all, uh, what's the right way to get rid of it? And we'll go forward with whatever recommendations we can come up with here, right? But right now it's a temporary state, and uh, there's already GitHub issues filed to say get rid of it, and what do we do? So that's what I'm bringing up here. And I just want to work together with anybody else that wants to work on you know, libepf and bpf tool making it cross-plat. There's people from any other runtimes, um, whether they're Linux or something else on that list or otherwise, then love to work with people. What do you do right now on Windows? What you, do we do we, for? Like, we don't have libpf on Windows. So like, what do you use for applications, like ah, for building applications? Um, so the answer for what we do right now for libbpf and bpf tool are different. So you want the libbpf answer? Well, like you write like yeah. bpf based tool or something, not yeah, like bpf tool itself, but like something temporarily. Some okay, and this is not a desirable state, right? Just to be clear, right? I'm not trying to defend this. This is the current state. Not saying this is a good idea. Okay, uh, it uses the same .h file but a different implementation. Well, like, but H file is like one small part of this, like yeah. the elf parsing, like loading the program, like doing yep, like yep. core and all this stuff. Like who's doing that right now? Um, on Windows, there's a library uh, that exposes the libapf API that does that. Some of the code comes from other places like libapf or the verifier or whatever, so. Yeah, so like th there was like a talk on now, last time. BPF was tool, on the other hand, it is the actual BPF tool. It's just a fork of the BPF tool that if defs out the parts that don't work on Windows, right? But that's not the case currently for libbpf. That's the case we want to get much closer to. So we already have a little zoo of different loaders, right? And like yeah. at least like one thing that they kind of agree on is like roughly like the same concept of like the map is the variable, the programs are yep. like functions in sections, all this stuff, right? Like this. This is general expectation of how like the BPF programming looks like, right? Then yep. 
each library probably has like tiny incompatibilities or like extensions, but this overall approach to like variables, functions, mm -hmm. all stuff. So I think Lawrence uh, was like really, really advocating for having like a common battery of tests, right? Like I think their yeah, idea was yeah. to just like make sure that everything is parsable. I don't think that's enough, but like we can start that, right? Uh, maybe that's the way forward. And instead of trying to share the code between libpf on like Linux and on Windows, maybe we should put our efforts into building something that can be like testing all the different concepts that we added into like the BPF side uh, and uh, maybe write some like minimal applications that like have codified behavior, right? Like that you load yeah. it and like if you run it once, the map has to have value one, two, three and stuff. Similar to what we do in self-test. Mm -hmm. really, yeah, because like it, make them, like, maybe not make them specifically cr cr cross-platform, but like use similar mm -hmm. idea to have like some, mm -hmm. some set of more or less automatable uh, Integration yeah, acceptance uh, test. Let's, let's call yeah. them acceptance test. Yeah, yeah. I think the goal that we're trying to meet is to at least the goal that I think most of us are trying to meet. I, hope, I, I, I won't say all in case somebody disagrees here. Um, is to allow for easy cross-platform application. That if I can take an application that's written for one OS or for another one, I don't have to write it twice. I can write it once. It will tend to work. Okay. So how do you do that, right? If you have the same .h file that says, okay, here's the contract, right? That goes part way there, but it doesn't enforce that you've actually adhered to the semantics, right? So for that, you either need a common implementation underneath or you need a really good test suite that says, we're going to make sure the same test suite exercises it in the same ways, and as long as you adhere to all the stuff that the test suite tests, right, then you're good because now your other implementation conforms to the semantics. Right? And I think that's where you're going in your, in your comment there. Okay? We could go either of those. I tend to like sharing code and not having re-implementation, but uh, since I'm trying to proxy not just for Windows but for you know, the next one that comes along, right, that, uh, is that, that, you know, I, I don't have a strong opinion, so I can say that either of those would work for us. So, If we were to take this one step further, wouldn't the, the next thing up be like its own language that wraps arbitrary concepts and then gets the kernel implements the correct translation of that at runtime? That sounds like a lot of work. Elaborate. I, I, I look forward to, to your contribution. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it seems like that's where, like, if we were to keep going up this chain of like cross-platformness and like cross-language. Because uh, I would love to not have to invent new languages or even new APIs and just yeah. reuse as much as possible and just standardize. It gets back to I don't remember if it was somebody's point that I, that it was way back here is that uh, back in the set of goals here that. The more developers there are implementing on a common platform, the faster that one goes, instead of fragmenting the developer stuff across two different implementations the same thing, and now you only get half the work done because you got to implement twice, right? So I'm all for centralize as much as it makes sense. Okay. So uh, I would say just send like your whatever you have as the if dev hacks, though you don't like them, it's understandable that well. Probably a lot of people will not like them, yeah. but since we haven't seen like any of that code, it's kind of hard to like be specific what whether like A or B is better or whether there is an option C. Yeah. My suggestion: just send whatever you yeah. have, whatever hacks you have, to the list and let the community see what is even possible. Maybe the whole thing can be somehow massaged yeah. into indeed having like single libpf that compiles fine, and then we'll deal somehow with uh, CI problem. And it will yeah. both compile on both Windows and Linux. Like there are plenty of like none of this is new, right? So LLVM as a project exists on yeah. Windows and generate yeah. all of this. Yep. And as far as LLVM goes, the CI there is done that it runs on all platforms all the time. Yep. So but uh, it has slightly different uh, merge uh, criteria because LLVM can merge patches and anyone it was a commit rise can merge the patches and they can revert anyone else patches. So okay. somebody with Windows, like the Windows, for example, CI will run later, like a day later, and say like, oh, yeah. well, VM commit broke it. The Windows folks will just revert the patch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, but on LVM on Windows, of course, not, not the same. So we cannot yeah. use the same approach here, yep. especially because like commits in the kernel tree, not easily revertible unlike mm -hmm. LLVM. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can try to use, if you go back to, yeah, next slide, uh, to use the platform agnostic code to use A, uh, to have a CI for both, uh, Windows and Linux mm -hmm. running, and then we'll see how much of the problem it would be for yeah. 
majority of the developers because let's say if Windows like keep breaking for every change, people will start complaining. They will say, well, like I have no means of testing this on Windows, like how I will do it and like CI will become red and we sort of will gravitate towards option B we think today and somebody on Windows, like it's all nothing of this new, but we can try to step on the same rakes. Hopefully it doesn't hurt as much. Uh, in, in here, another point I wanted to make is it's not only like different platform, but thinking about libpf and bpf tool as cross-platform, meaning that we would have to be able to build potentially on whatever CI will be running like on Windows, uh, sorry, let's say Linux, but we would build for Windows as a target. So it's uh -huh. a different cross-platform compatibility. Uh, and same like on x86 build build for ARM or from x86 build for S390. This all I think will go, like there are plenty of things to solve there. Yeah, um, that I think is a much harder problem that I would like to not have to solve. Meaning say build for Windows on Linux or vice versa. I would like to not have to solve that. But like going back to the, to the mock thing, right? So if we have somehow like a, I don't know, some, some mock API that would that developers could understand and could even extend or or run on Linux, but which would where the code would be like the platform agnostic code for libppf would be using that underneath. Maybe that would help also for the CI. And if something breaks, people can look it up and see what is expected there. Or I don't know. Maybe that's an option. But I mean. Um, GitHub, which I mentioned because both you know, Windows, all the other runtimes, and uh, the mirror are all in GitHub right now. GitHub, you can have CI/CD that run that the, the CI/CD builds and tests on different platforms, all part of the same uh, CI/CD. Right? We use that on Windows, and there's a bunch of other open source projects that do you know, multiple builds um, right now. So that part I think is is solvable because you're building Windows on Windows and because you're building Linux on Linux. Right? You're not trying to do the cross compilation. So GitHub makes it really easy to say. Compile for Windows, compile for Linux, but do so within a Linux VM and a, and a, and a uh, Windows VM. Um, so that's why I would like to not have to solve the cross-compilation cross problem, because I think it's really, really hard. Um, not that it's impossible, but that I would like a shortcut, so. Um, but, so so uh, from, your, from, from your estimate, like, yeah. how much do you think of uh, libppf when you looked at it would be generic enough for you? Is it like 60% or like, I, I don't know, it's... Like, like, I think like the attach points, they could, they are pretty much Linux specific, and they could probably also stay Linux specific, maybe. And the, the, there are there are some attach points that are actually uh, cross plat. So I, I would say you know XDP is an example of a cross plat mm -hmm. um, uh, attach point. You get, you know, has a program type that's cross plat, but there's yeah. XDP on multiple platforms. So and there's a natural. Uh, I, there. I mean, I was just thinking like, yeah. if um, some of the Li uh, library helpers that would load the BPF programs if they could be marked as platform generic, maybe, yeah, yeah. and other things yep. not. Yep, yep. exactly. So that's what, um, so I've done some of that right now. I would say the code is not pretty because uh, it was a shortest path and not ready for, you know, upstreaming yet. But if somebody wants to take a look, it's really easy to take, whoops, really easy to take a look, just going back to... Uh, this slide. It's really easy to take a look because it's just a fork in GitHub. So it's really easy to, you know, click a button and say, here's the comparable diffs between the mirror, okay, and the fork because it's a fork of the mirror, right? And so GitHub can generate, and you can look at all the differences. I can easily send a link to anybody who wants it. It says, okay, well, what would you want to do to, if you, so it's, if all you want to do is you want to see how difficult it is or see what the if defs look like and how ugly they are, that part you can look at right now, that's easy to do in, you know, five seconds. If you want to say clean it up, because I've given a proposal here that's based on what I don't like. Okay, here's what I did that I don't like, and then I wanted to give a proposal here before I translate it into something that I do like. Right? What do we actually like that would actually be the right thing? So, before doing that work, that's why I want to give this presentation. Um, but uh, saying, okay, so if you want to take what I did and start upstreaming that into BPF next, that's the big hurdle that I mentioned, right? Because that that's I can't just generate a GitHub pull request and there's other processes and stuff that I'm less familiar with than everybody else in this room. And so that's the hurdle here is I would love to work with somebody else who's an expert in doing that, uh, given that there's already a pull request or an, a, a, the ability to generate a pull request in GitHub to translate that into stuff that goes in the BPF next mailing list and BPF and so on. I would love to work with somebody else who's an expert in that, so. Okay. 
right, so I've gotten a couple of pieces of helpful feedback. Um, I still have some open questions here, but I'm um, uh, happy to keep chatting with people offline. So. So what would you, like as a last question, what would you see as a immediate next step that you could do, like the, like the compiler includes, for example, or? In, yeah, this is an increasing order, yeah. So like, the, if I were to take the changes right now, which are sitting in a fork of the mirror, right, um, then it's really easy to factor out these parts, the compiler-specific parts, and do it right, because it's not like it's done this way right now, but it's easy to convert to this and put that into a separate pull request you know, a separate, you know, branch or, you know, tag or whatever in GitHub, and then say, hey, is there somebody that I can work with to translate this into, you know, the appropriate way to put it into BPF next, right? If all you're going to do is merge it into the mirror, if that one became authoritative, that part's easy, right? It's the translation of the process from the GitHub per request review process into the uh, BPF next process is the hurdle, so. It's not insurmountable, I just need, you know, would prefer to work with somebody because this whole point is being cross-platform to not just be one platform working on it, to have people from multiple platforms that are collaborating, so. So yeah, the compiler-specific stuff is the first easy one. I would, I would probably do them in this order, right? A compiler one, then platform-specific code, which is a lot about, you know, uh, dependencies on, on things like that, and then feature-specific code that's increasing order of difficulty, right? So I'd probably do them in that order. Makes sense? Okay. All right. Thanks.